who don't do anything to mess up your Laylatul Qadr. Dear brothers and sisters, I'll keep it short, but I want you to remember the five things that I'm going to share with you inshaAllah ta'ala as we look out for Laylatul Qadr now. Sunday night begins the pursuit. Every single one of those nights has the potential to be the most consequential night of your life. And so for 10 nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking out to His creation. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what He sees from us is pleasing to Him. Allahumma ameen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever stands up, whoever observes Laylatul Qadr with faith and seeking the reward, Allah will forgive them for all of their previous sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. So five things, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to carry with you inshaAllah ta'ala and to set your mind to from now as we get into these last 10 nights. Number one, as we go into the last 10 nights and as we hope that we catch Laylatul Qadr, remembering that the night starts at Maghrib. Remembering that the night does not start at Isha, but the night starts at Maghrib. How many people at the time of their breaking of the fast will lose out their Laylatul Qadr before they pray a single rak'ah of Taraweeh, before they even make it to Salat al-Isha? Why? Because over iftar, you might backbite, you might gossip, you might say something you should not be saying, you might do something that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so remember to include everything from the Adhan of Maghrib all the way to the Adhan of Fajr as part of your Laylatul Qadr. The second thing, dear brothers and sisters, to make sure that we catch Isha and Fajr all 10 of those nights and days within Jama'ah. And if that Jama'ah cannot be in a masjid for those that are not able to, then that Jama'ah is formed in some other way, but to pray it in congregation, to pray three hours in the night, but to miss Fajr, for example, or to miss your Isha would not be more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the second thing. The third thing, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said authentically, that whoever prays Qiyam with the Imam until he finishes, Allah will write down for him the entire night in prayer. What is the best dua in Laylatul Qadr? We all know the answer to that. This number four means keeping yourself busy in dua and particularly the short duas. I'm gonna mention the reason why. Most people in here, if not everyone, already memorizes Allahumma inna ka'afuun to hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the partner, you love to pardon, so pardon. Use the short comprehensive du'as you memorize from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and let them engage you throughout the entire night. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, number five. This is the most comprehensive way to understand Laylatul Qadr and it's very important. That when the last 10 nights would come in, the Prophet ﷺ would tighten up his waist belt and he would give life to the night. What a beautiful expression. And he would wake up his family. He would make sure that his family also was participating in it. Rasulullah when he said, do not turn your homes into graveyards. Why? Because dhikr gives life to the heart and it gives life to any space that we are in. And Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a very important reflection on this hadith. He says that when you look at the companions of the Prophet wasallam, some of them prefer to spend the night in praying. Some of them prefer to spend the night in Qur'an al-Qur'an, in the recitation of the Qur'an. Some of them prefer to spend the night in Dua. Some of them prefer to spend the night distributing their sadaqat. Each one of them had a regimen and they weren't all the same. And subhanAllah, we find a connection between particularly in that regard, Dua and charity, Dua and sadaqa to Al-Qadr, to decree. Why? Because the Prophet wasallam said, that there are two things that affect your divine decree. He mentioned dua, that nothing uh, changes the divine decree except for supplication, except for dua. And he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that nothing extends the life of a person except for a sadaqa, except for charity. That would actually form an extension, change the decree and extend a person's life. Lastly, the most simple form of advice. What is the point of i'tikaf if you're still connected to everybody and everything in i'tikaf? A person could be sitting in the masjid all night long, would have their phone and still be checking groups and still be going on different apps and still talking to people. Cut it all off in the last 10 nights. Rasulullah went in complete i'tikaf in the last 10 nights. 
let's try to cut it all off inshaAllah. Remember SubhanAllah, Laylatul Qadr, the night of Laylatul Qadr was lost because the Prophet came out and he saw two companions that were arguing. 